On April 29, 1945, a group of American soldiers made a discovery that traumatized them for the rest of their lives. By then, the Allies had successfully invaded Europe, entered Germany, and the Third Reich was on the brink of surrender. Gradually, the concentration camps where the Nazis held their prisoners began to be released. It was in this context that the 45th Infantry Division of the United States Army approached the surroundings of Dachau, one of the most terrible Nazi camps, with the aim of capturing it and releasing the inmates. As they approached the establishment, the Americans saw something strange on the road. On the railroad tracks there were almost 40 abandoned wagons, from which came a nauseating smell. As the soldiers would later recall, at first they thought that perhaps there was some chemical plant at Dachau, which would explain the sour aroma that polluted the air and made it difficult for them to breathe. Others compared it to the stench of burning hair, but all agreed that it was unbearable. The men approached the wagons, not knowing what they would find inside. When they opened the doors, they were met with an absolutely horrifying image. Nothing throughout the war had prepared them for that. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we'll tell you everything about the Dachau Massacre. The Dachau concentration camp was opened in 1933, a few weeks after Adolf Hitler came to power. At first, it was intended as a place to house Nazi political prisoners, but over time it became a source of slave labor and an extermination center for all those the regime considered undesirable. It is estimated that, in total, some 230,000 people passed through Dachau and suffered all kinds of harassment. They were not only subjected to torture and abuse by the SS, who ran the place, but were also used in sinister medical experiments that resulted in hundreds of deaths. Around 1945, as the Allies advanced on German territory, the Nazi leaders ordered the evacuation of the concentration camps to eliminate evidence of the crimes that occurred inside. In April, thousands of Dachau prisoners were forced to leave the site by train or on foot, in grueling walks that would become known as death marches. Those who traveled by train had to endure confinement in tiny carriages, crowded with hundreds of inmates, in deplorable conditions. About 2,000 prisoners died from suffocation, thirst, hunger, and heat, their corpses being left in the carriages and dumped on the railroad tracks. Back then, most Americans were unaware of the horrors that took place in the concentration camps. They believed they were run like prison centers in the United States, where inmates were confined to barracks, but did not suffer the typical Nazi torture. That is why what they saw at Dachau was a surprise that affected them deeply. As we told you at the beginning of the video, when the Americans arrived at Dachau, they detected an unbearable smell coming from the wagons and, when they opened them, they found decomposing bodies. They were so starved they looked like skeletons, their skin hanging in tatters over what little flesh remained, their cheeks sunken, their eyes wide with suffering. At such a sight, the Americans were shocked, burst into tears and some vomited. Inside the camp there were still 100 SS guards, the only ones who had not escaped. On the other hand, there were about 30,000 prisoners, who when they saw the American troops come to their rescue, went crazy with happiness. They crowded on the fences, waving at them and crying with joy. For Nazis appeared at the door of the establishment, with their hands up, announcing to the Americans that they had no intention of resisting and that they would surrender immediately. One of the American officers, Lt. William Walsh, enraged by what he had seen, led the Germans to the cars. He made them kneel down and, one by one, he shot them with his pistol, leaving them dying in the middle of the tracks. Moments later one of his subordinates approached, who, far from being moved by the wounded, finished them off with his rifle. This was the beginning of a massacre that would not take long to reach its climax. Inside the camp, Lt. Walsh had about 50 SS guards rounded up, lined them up against a wall, and ordered his men to keep a careful eye on them. Suddenly, one of the Americans shouted, they are trying to escape, and fired his machine gun at the Germans. His comrades joined him, and the situation turned into a deafening gunfire, with dozens of rifles opening fire in unison. The Nazis were pierced by shells and dropped like flies, bleeding from various wounds. 
a lieutenant colonel ran up and ordered his men to stop. In total there were some 17 dead, while the rest were badly wounded, and although the American doctors were ordered to attend to the Germans, they refused to do so. Shortly after, another group of Americans found 10 Nazis hiding in a tower. As before, the final fate of the SS men was violent, as they were shot on the spot. According to the Americans, one of the Germans had a pistol hidden behind his back and was about to draw it, forcing them to fire. Meanwhile, freed Dachau prisoners scoured the site for guards who were known to be torturers and cruel. They beat them furiously until they lay dying on the ground, and others had their heads smashed in with shovels and pikes. They also killed the guards' dogs, because these animals were used to execute inmates who broke the rules of the camp. On occasions, the American soldiers lent their pistols and rifles to the inmates, so that they could finish off the Nazis and satisfy their desire for revenge. It is estimated that some 50 Nazis died on that day. A few days later, an American officer wrote a letter to his parents in which he recounted his experience that day. These were his words, May God forgive me, but we observed everything without any kind of feeling or compassion, because those men deserved it. How did they think they could commit those crimes and then get away without any punishment? All the men who saw what was in the wagons agreed that the Germans deserved to die. When the high command of the United States Army found out what had happened, they ordered an investigation into the events. The idea that his own subordinates were capable of actions like this, that they violated the rules of war, was inadmissible, especially at a time when the Americans wanted to show themselves as morally superior to the Nazis. Despite the fact that statements were taken from the witnesses of that day, the Dachau soldiers did not give too many details, and stuck to a vague and imprecise story. The court that tried them ruled that they acted in a state of shock caused by seeing the corpses on the train, so that the executions, although not justifiable, were understandable. In this way, the Americans were forgiven for their actions, although, today, the Dachau massacre remains one of the most controversial episodes of World War II. We have reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, do you think the Dachau massacre was justified? Leave your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.